verse 3 says, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is, should, should be praised. And I'm thanking God that you woke up with the praise, amen, in your mouth, out of the abundance of your heart. Your mouth spoke when the sun rose this morning. And as the sun is setting this evening and light is still flowing in your body, there is a praise that's given unto our God. And here we are this evening once again in this time of our receiving the directions from the divine one, our God in heaven. But as he lives in our hearts and the person of the Holy Spirit, even now we are grateful and we are thankful for this time that we understanding the call of a man, his name in the earth realm, there is no other name that's greater than his name, the praising of his name, hallelujah, and we are thankful for you that are lifting your voices right now in this evening, no matter what your day has been, and no matter what it is that you have encountered during the course of this day, even the way that you may be possibly feeling right now, I thank God that out of your spirit, you're mustering up a praise. Amen. Just the waving of your hand right now. Just the telling of the Lord, thank you. Amen. With the breath that you have, with the strength that you have. As the sun goes down, his name is still being praised. It's like verse 1, amen, of Psalms 103, where it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. We are blessing him and we're not forgetting his benefits even now. It's not based on how I may be feeling, but it's an act of my will. Once again, what verse 1 of Psalms 34 says, I will, not I necessarily feel, but I will. I will bless the Lord at all times. All times encompasses whether I'm feeling what we call physically my best, or I may not be physically feeling my best, but my will is still in operation. So I will bless the Lord even in this time. And right now, his praise is in my mouth. Hallelujah. So we're grateful and we're thankful for this blessed privilege that he has afforded us where we are able to come together and to bless his name this evening. And so we take this time to pray. We take this time to lift up, amen, the wonderful, awesome, glorious, mighty, powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just believe that our Father God, he hears us now. Glory to God. He hears us now. He hears us from heaven where he sits, but he hears us calling even from the earth. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that your breath breathed into our body, still flows, still flows, still flows. We thank you that your mind, the mind of Christ, we are grateful for holding this evening the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of his heart. Yes, we are thankful that we have what energy and what strength we have in our hands and have in our arms. We, we clap them and we lift them, as your word says. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We clap our hands unto thee, O God. Hallelujah. And we're just grateful and we're just thankful with our mouths, amen, with a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of praise unto thee. We bless your name this evening. And so we thank you now that this blessed privilege afforded us to continue to be conformed to the image of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for it now, Father. We thank you for the awesome teacher again this evening, whom you've given unto us, he being the Holy Ghost, who teaches us all things and brings all things to our remembrance, whatsoever you have said unto us. And so we thank you now that he teaches us in this very hour what it is that we ought to say, what it is that you want said, and therefore as the incorruptible seed as your word is, it will certainly, O oh God, be planted. It will certainly be planted. It will certainly be planted in the hearts of these that are receiving your word, that they can share it with others where we can all be strengthened coming from that of possibly a hopeless mindset unto a hopeful mindset. We can continue to trust and adjust, oh God. We will not be derailed. Uh, we will not dive deep into discussion, uh, I mean, dis discouragement. Father, matter of fact, we won't dive there at all. 
We thank you that you're picking us up. Hallelujah. Instead of giving up, we're getting up. Instead of giving up, we're getting, I, I speak that over someone's life this evening, God, where it is that there was a hopeless matter, amen, a situation that has caused them to be so discouraged. But I thank you, Father, that you have given the release to even speak this over their lives, that this evening, whomever it is, Father, I thank you that rather than giving up, they're getting up. Rather than giving up, they're getting up. They're getting up because of the word that they hear spoken to their hearts even now. They're getting up because of how the Holy Spirit is bringing to their remembrance that which it is that you've spoken. I thank you that they are getting up instead of giving up. And I believe that it's being made manifest even now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you that the devil is defeated. You, Father God, are exalted. We thank you that Jesus Christ is Lord this evening. And we just believe that this word, it, which it is, that you shall speak to us and teach us this evening. Our lives are made the better for your glory. For as truly as you live, Father, the whole earth is, be, is to be filled with your glory. Thank you now for this blessed privilege of fellowship with you through the study of your word. In Jesus' name, I yield unto thee, spirit, soul, and body, and agree with the hymnologist in saying, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You're the potter and we're the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. Here we are, O oh God, waiting. Here we are, yielded and still. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we greet you once again, my brothers and sisters, in the word of our living God, our Father, glory to God who is not dead. We, like the angel said to the disciples and the women, he says, why seek ye the living among the dead? Amen. Why is it that you're looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. And we thank God that in he being risen, he is causing us to arise. Psalm 68 verse 1 says, let God arise and let all his inner enemies be scattered and those that hate him shall flee from him. Let God arise. Let him, let him arise. Let him arise. And I just believe that. And I say that, my brothers and sisters, again unto you, to your spirits, because the word of God, according to John chapter 6 verse 63, the word of God is spirit and the word of God is life. The word of God is spirit, and that's what Jesus says. It is the spirit that quickeneth, or it's the spirit that gives life. Your flesh profiteth nothing. He says, the words that I speak unto you, those words are spirit, and those words are life. And therefore, I speak his words unto you even now, and I say unto you that he has gotten up, glory to God, he has gotten up, even though they crucified him on the cross, he didn't give up on the will of the Father being done, knowing the plan of the Father. Instead of him giving up and just letting it be the end, instead of giving up, he got up. And I hear that for you now. Instead of giving up, you're getting up. Instead of giving up, you're getting up. And these words are being spoken to your spirit. These words are life to your spirit. Because it is the spirit that quickeneth and give life. So can you just take, listen, just another moment. Yes, Father, we will. Another moment. And just, and just extend your arms right now. Extend your arms. Extend your hand. Open your hands. All right. And say, listen, there are some things that have just wear, been wearing on me. And, and I've not really talked to anybody about them. You really don't know how heavy my heart is. You don't know how, how heavy my mind is and what I'm struggling with right now. But I say to you in the name of Jesus. I say to you in the name of Jesus. I say it one more time. In the name of Jesus this evening. I speak. Speak this by the spirit of the living God. These words are spirit. I'm speaking to your heart. I'm not speaking to your head. I'm speaking to your heart. And I say this based on John chapter 6 verse 63. As you see that verse before you, it says it is the spirit that quickeneth. It's this quick quickeneth means to give life. Quickeneth, the word quickeneth means to give life. He says, listen, listen, your flesh profiteth nothing. He says the answer is not in your flesh, it's in the spirit of God. Amen. It's in your, notice the word spirit has a small s on it, so it's talking about your heart. 
your heart. And I'm not talking about the blood pump in your body, but your human spirit, because we do know you are a spirit. You have a soul and your spirit and your soul live in your body. You are a three part being. You are a spirit. You know, it's like remember when Jesus was on the cross and when he died, he says, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And then the Bible says he gave up the ghost. His spirit left his body. All right. And so the body is just the place where your spirit lives. So it is the spirit that receives life. And so I need to speak life to your spirit. And I say to you right now, I say to you right now, new life, I say to you right now, MCC, I say to you right now, it in the name of Jesus, you are not giving up, you are getting up. Why? We're not looking for the living among the dead. We're not looking for the living among the dead. River of life, amen, Elder Mac Miller, I'm saying unto you, uh, Sister Minerva, amen, as you have graced us once again to be a part of your study of the word of God in Psalms 91, we welcome this opportunity once again. And I'm saying to you, my brother, my son, my friend, I'm saying unto you now, by the spirit of the living God, I speak to your spirit, you are not giving up. Whatever this pertains to, whatever it is applicable to, wherever it can be applied, where it's being, where you can supply, where you can apply it, is because God is supplying it. You can apply it to any area of your life right now. That anointing, yes, Jesus, that anointing is present and that you can apply it because God is supplying it. You can apply it. Reach out. Receive it now. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Miss Butler, Miss Butler, can you hear that? Mr. Butler, can you hear that? Gwen, can you hear that? Are you listening in Jesus' name? I say to you that you can apply what God is supplying. You can apply what God is supplying in Jesus' name. I declare it as he speaks that to my heart. I say to all of you, now just lift your hand and tell the Lord thank you if you believe that. If you believe it and you receive it, God, I thank you that you are supplying what I need so that I can apply it to my life. And what you are supplying me with tonight is this word that instead of me giving up, I'm getting up. Instead of me giving up, just like Jesus, though they crucified him, nailed him to a cross, took him off the cross, put him in the grave. Amen. Some would say, well, that's the end. That's the end. Amen. They could say, listen, we just give up. And that's where the disciples were because it had not yet been come, become revelation to them about the resurrection. So they had given up. They had gone off. They were hiding out in a room. Uh, as the Bible records in John chapter 20, they were hiding for fear of the Jews. That's what we're going to continually talk about this evening. Amen. Fear. Fear, as we have been studying from the 91st Psalm in verse 13, is where we are in the Psalm. But for fear of the Jews, I think in John chapter 20, is it verse 19, I believe, somewhere in 1920, where the Bible talks about how it was that the disciples, amen, after Jesus had been crucified, they had given up. They had given up. They had given up. They had given up, hallelujah, and in their, in their giving up, brothers and sisters, in their giving up regarding that which it was that the, uh, had occurred unto them. And the Bible did say, and it does say, hallelujah, glory to God, amen, in that 19th verse of John chapter 20, it says, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be still. They were hiding out because of fear, because of fear, and this fear had gripped them. But Jesus came to where they were as it relates to this fear that caused them to shut down, this caused them to be hiding out. And so he came and he ministered. I'm saying to you this evening in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that instead of you giving up, yes, God, yes, instead of you giving up, even in your private and personal struggles in your mind, you say, you know, I've been dealing with this so long, I'm just tired. 
I'm just tired and I'm just trying to hold on to the end. I just, no need in me trying to make a difference any longer. I just can't deal with this any longer. And, and, and this, whatever this is, and whatever this is that's challenging you, I say to you that God knows it and the devil is pushing it. He's trying to push you and press you in terms of giving up. But I hear the Spirit of God saying to you this evening, instead of you giving up, you are getting up. Instead of you giving up, you are getting up. Instead of you giving up, you are getting up. And so as he has so spoken that into our lives and he has so spoken that unto us, we're just grateful and we're just thankful in the name of Jesus Christ that this is a day where I keep on praising him. I told you earlier, it's called a yet praise. I will yet praise him. No matter what's occurring, no matter what's happening, I will yet praise him. And so therefore, one more time, one more time, I'm telling you, lay your hands on yourself and says, I'm not giving up. I'm getting up. I'm not giving up. I'm getting up. You know, it's just like uh, if you know anything about uh, 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 the uh, sport of boxing, Amen. That uh, one of the uh, fighters can be knocked down. And when he's knocked down, all right, and there's a, there, there's a count. And he has, uh, they do an eight count in that regard to see if he can go on with the fight. And he's down on the mat. One. they down on the mat. Two. Some of you have been down like that before. Three. Down on the mat. Four. Down on the mat. Five. Down on the mat. Six. Down on the mat, seven, and he's getting up. He's getting up, and the ref comes to him, and the referee talks to him a little bit. He says, all right. Uh, he, he says, okay, you can go on with, with the fight. And several more times, he gets knocked down, but he's able to recover, and he gets back up. And therefore, my brothers and my sisters, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. That's what I want to mention to you tonight. It's not looking good. That's, it's not looking good. But in our study, Elder Mac Miller, uh, River of Life, brothers and sisters, in our study of the Word of God tonight, amen, as we are shown the Word of God regarding the 91st Psalm in that 13th verse of Psalms 91, the Bible speaks about, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample on defeat. <clears throat> Thou shalt tread, amen. There's a marching and a walking in the midst of. That's what treading talks about. I'm walking in the midst of something. Got stuff going on around me, but I'm just walking in the midst of it. All right, I'm marching. I'm marching through uh, as it relates to these things that are around me. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. And then it says, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample. Now, trample, once again, has to do with not just walking in the midst of, but it is a stomping and a crushing, all right, that which happens to be in my midst. I don't just walk by to walk in the midst of it, but there are times when it is that God says, okay, we're going to deal with this thing right now. We're going to deal with this right now. And he gives you and I the authority to stand, to step on it, stand on it, to crush it in terms of it being annihilated in terms of it not continuing in your life and in my life. You can safely meet a lion or step on poisonous snakes. Yes, even trample them beneath your feet. That's one of the translations of, of, of the Bible other than the King James. But my brothers and sisters, as we have shared thus far, that there are three animals that are basically mentioned here in the 13th verse of the 91st Psalm, which is called amen, uh, as we affectionately call it, amen, the canopy of God's protection of our lives as we've been speaking it for the past 26 years into the atmosphere whenever we assemble the 91st Psalm, the canopy of God's protection of our lives, and therefore we have shared with you, glory to God, our, our position regarding the canopy. Verse 1, we've talked about, amen, the proclamation regarding the canopy, I will say of the Lord, and then we start talking about the perseverance, all right, how it is that he preserves us in uh, verses 3 through 12. It's the perseverance of the canopy, and here uh, recently uh, we have been discussing the power, all right, that begins in verse 13 
all right, the power, amen, that begins in verse 13 of, of the canopy. And he mentions three animals here. He mentions a lion. He mentions an adder, okay, which is a serpent or a snake, okay? The lion, the adder, and then the dragon. The lion, the adder, and then the dragon. The lion represents, all three of these animals represent a certain type of fear that the devil tries to bring up on our lives. A certain type of fear that's in this world, in this earth that we are in. There's uh, each one of them represent a certain type of fear. The lion represents the fear of what you hear. The lion represents the fear of what you hear. It's how words are used to cause us to be afraid, to become uh, 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 traumatized, to become paralyzed, where we can't function because of things that are being said. Things that are being said. It's called the fear of the lion. We've studied the word lion, shakal, which means to roar. And when lions roar, it paralyzes animals in the jungle when they hear that sound. We've discussed that, the fear of what we hear. We go forward now in terms of the adder, which is the serpent or a snake. The serpent or the adder, all right, represents, amen, the fear of what you see. The fear of what you see. Okay, put that in your notes. You got that? The lion represents the fear of what you hear. But the adder, the serpent, or the snake represents the fear of what you see. The fear of what you see. All right. The word, the, the uh, Hebrew word pathen, it's P-E-T-H-E-N. Pathen is the word for adder or serpent or snake. That's the Hebrew word for it. It means to, to twist something. It means to, to twist or to contort. C-O-N-T-O-R-T, to twist or to contort something, all right? And what the devil does is just based on the things that he shows us or when we look at a thing, the way that he shows us that thing or gives us his perspective, it twists our thinking from the way God wants us to see it. And so what happens is the Holy Spirit has to continue to say, Sister Marcellus, he has to say, Sister Smart, amen. He keeps on saying, Brother Smith, he keeps on calling out, amen. Pastor Lance, he says that. Gloria, he says that. Hallelujah, he says that. Bishop, Bishop Johnson, Bishop um, Fulton, amen. Uh, 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 Bishop Randall, he says that unto us. He says the enemy keeps on trying to get you twisted. He tries to twist your mind so that you can't lead your people effectively in terms of the will of God. He tries to twist your thinking, all right, by the things that he shows you. By the things that he shows you. He tries to twist your thinking by the things that he shows you. That's what pathan, which is the Hebrew word for the word adder, it has to do with a twisting. And so therefore, uh, uh, Elder MacMiller, there are things uh, like, uh, you preach the word of God Sunday and or even the week before that. And as you preach the word of God, then the devil, by the time your people gets to the parking lot, the adder, the serpent, he will show them something else. And he'll show them something else. How? One of the ways he shows them something else is he causes the fear of what they see because of the fear of what they hear. You know as well as I do, you've heard the statement that a picture is worth a thousand words. So what happens is, is that he sends someone in their midst to share with them negative words. Negative words. And what they begin to do with those words, I'm going to show you here in a text this evening. And while I'm speaking, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. All right, and, uh, and when you get there, go to verse 22 in 1 Samuel chapter 17. You have your Bibles, and then when you get there, go to verse 22. Now, my brothers and my sisters, what happens um, as it relates to the fear of what you see, all right, the fear of what you see is many times brought forth by the fear of what you hear. 
all right, the lion roars so that he can now promote the fear of the serpent. Now, let me say this about serpents and about twisting and all. Do you know what? The, the, the average person, it's not everybody, but the average person, many of you right now, uh, just listen, you can walk outside. I'm talking about walk outside. I, in Jesus' name, I pray that this doesn't happen. And I'm speaking it up upon you, all right? But in the morning, you can walk outside, all right? Getting ready to go wherever it is that you're getting ready to go, and you walk outside, and you just say you, you're going, somebody's going to, to set the tra tra trash out, or someone, or you walk into your car, and then all of a sudden, all right, it's called sudden fear. All of a sudden, and this is uh, how the, the fear of what you see works, because it's called sudden fear. All right, you're walking, and you're on your way to your car. You're taking out the trash, and just right before you get to the trash can, right before you get to your car, all right, uh, there happens to be a snake, all right, crawling out of the grass, all right, crawling out of the grass, and not necessarily crawling towards you. Not that, but just the sight of the snake, just the sight, it just changes your whole world. Just the sight of that snake can mess you up for the rest of the day. And everywhere you look now, all day long, you're looking for snakes. All day long, every time you, uh, uh, you look down, you look around. You know why? Because there was an image that was placed in your mind. And the devil uses, all right, and, and, and this is the thing, the snake that you saw, was a garter snake, you know, a garter snake, a green snake, garter, G-A-R-T-E, G-A-R-T-E, a garter snake, okay? Just a, the snake is so innocent. When I say innocent, I mean he's not a poisonous snake. He's not a snake. A garter snake can do you no harm, can do you no harm. I mean, there are different types of snakes, and we have to ask God to, to help us in terms of dealing even with snakes in the kingdom. All right, snakes in the kingdom. Uh, God help, help me with this now. Snakes in the kingdom. We have to deal with snakes uh, many times, and he teaches us. He said, be wise as a serpent. Now, he wouldn't tell us to be wise as a serpent if we didn't have to deal with serpents. All right, and just, just the sight of that garter snake, that green snake, that can do you no harm. You say, listen, I'm telling you this, Bishop, I don't care what kind of snake he is. It don't matter to me what kind of snake. It's just a snake. And in my mind, I don't like snakes, and I don't want to be around snakes. And so just the fear that I have of snakes, even with a snake that can do me no harm, I still want to go in the opposite direction. I don't want to be around him. Just the fear of what I see, the fear. And that's what the devil does. He creates a manophobia or a fear just on just showing us something. It can be something that could do us no harm, but just the sight of that thing. And then the thoughts that it causes to come forth in my mind, in your mind. Hallelujah. And a garter snake happens to be the type of snake that can do you no harm whatsoever. But it does not matter to you because just the sight of a snake. The sight of a snake. <laughs> you know what? It can be. Uh, when you walk out in that snake land, they're on the ground, and guess what? He already did. He's already dead. But it, it, that doesn't matter. It's a snake. It's a snake. Just the sight of him. It doesn't matter. He can be dead ten times over. It doesn't matter. It's a snake because I have this fear of snakes, and just the sight of one creates this fear that paralyzes me like when a lion roars. A lion roars. And so what happens, Elder McMiller, what happens, pastors, there are times when after you have preached the word of God and you've taught the word of God to your people, and before they get out the parking lot good, there comes, amen, a serpent, all right? Well, there comes a lion. Let me put it like this. And so the lion begins, you know what? I really didn't appreciate the message that Pastor preached this morning. And, uh, you know, he should learn how to be uh, a little bit more... Um, a little bit more, uh, what's the word I want to use, y'all? A little bit more political, uh, uh, or, or, or a little bit more um, uh, caring when he speaks the word of God. Uh, he's sitting, uh, be putting people business street. And listen, he didn't call anybody's name. He didn't call. As the Holy Ghost gave him the word, he did like Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 7 says, I prophesied as I was commanded. 
God told Ezekiel a certain thing to say to them bones, and that's what he said. Because if your life is going to come together, you got to have a man or woman of God that will prophesy as they are commanded. They will preach as they are commanded. They will teach as they are commanded. And they cannot be afraid of your faces. Amen. They can't help you. I've said to you before in times past, and I'll say this again, brothers and sisters, if I need you, I can't lead you. If I need you, see, once you know that I need you, then you can take your gift and your ability and want to hold me hostage. I'm telling you again, I refuse to be your POW, and I'm not going to be MIA. I refuse to be your prisoner of war, and I'm not going to be missing in action just because you have a gift and an ability, and therefore, certainly, we can use your gift and ability, but I'm not going to be so bound by the gift that you have where I can't not tell you the truth when you need to hear the truth. When I cannot speak the truth when you need to hear the truth. That's the only way you're going to grow up. Amen. It's speaking the truth to you in love. It doesn't. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, into all things. And so therefore, before they get to the parking lot, good, get to their car, the lion roars. All right. The fear of what we hear. The lion roars and begin to speak words contrary to what has been communicated to the congregation or not or just wait until you get home and get on the phone or, or, or text. All right. Uh, or email sharing that which is negative. It's the fear that the lion produces. And guess what happens? They, they didn't hear. Now, here it is. The fear of what you see. All right. The pathian. It begins to try to twist. Amen. The word that God gave straight. Amen. There was a straight word from God so that we can grow up. See that verse, Ephesians 4, 15? We speak the truth and truth in love that, that you can grow up into him. Him who? Jesus. You can grow up into him in all things. You can't grow up if the truth is not spoken to you in love. If the truth is not spoken, hallelujah. And so therefore, what God gave you, they say, son, this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to straighten it out. Because there are some things that are, are, are not straight in the lives of my people, and I love them, and I want to straighten these things out. So he gives them a message. He's preaching that message to the River of Life Church. It's being preached to the New Life Church. It's being preached, amen, to Kingdom Connection. It's being preached, amen, to Grace and Truth. It's being preached to Burning Bush. It's being preached that there's a truth that's being preached, hallelujah, to Breath of Life. It's being preached. Glory to God. And as that word is being preached, hallelujah, and as that word is being made manifest unto University of Life and unto United Rock of Ages, unto Word of Faith, un unto, amen, uh, a new lifestyle, amen, is being preached. The truth is being preached. It's for your growth. But what the enemy does is he, he roars. He roars to create fear in your mind. And then because you didn't see the message, you didn't see that message, all right, that way that is being spoken to you now when the roar of the lion comes, you say, come to think of it, maybe he was trying to throw off on me. Come to think of it, maybe he was trying to speak or what we call preaching at me, teaching at me. In that regard, maybe he was, but you didn't see it like that until the lion roared. And now there is a fear of what you see. You, you, because you begin to see what it is that they're saying that was opposite of what you saw in the first place. It's the, the serpent. It means to twist. It means to twist something. And the enemy always comes to try to twist the truth. He always comes to try to twist what it is that God has so spoken unto us. And so therefore, the fear, the fear, the fear of the lion, the fear of the lion, all right, the fear of the lion is what you hear. The fear of the adder is what you see, is what you see, and how he tries to paralyze us and to prevent us from operating and going forth to do what's right because of what we see, he begins to whisper in your ear and say, you know, if you say that, he begins to show you, you know, this is going to happen. 
and you know that's going to happen. And then you say, well, maybe I shouldn't say anything at all. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything, but I'm not going to say anything at all because, you know, I, I just want to keep the peace and I want to keep things that are, that are right. And then there is the prompting of the Spirit of God. Amen. And you understand that truth is not, a, not accepted. Amen. Uh, in many situations, truth is not accepted. But it's sad to say that people would much rather hear a lie than the truth. They would much rather, and I told you before, my granddaddy taught me that a lie has wings, but the truth got feet. And a lie will spread faster, and it will get there quicker, but whenever the lie arrives, it doesn't have anything to stand on. But now it may take the truth a while to get there. After you said it, and you back away, and let the truth take its time. And the truth may not get there as fast as the lie did, because the lie got wings. And it's just boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's there fast. But, but listen, whenever a lie arrives, it has nothing to stand on. It only has wings. A lie doesn't have feet. And, but the truth has feet. Does not have wings, but the truth has feet. And by the time that the truth gets there, whenever the truth arrives, it can stand. Whenever. And God says, I want you to understand that because my word is truth. Doesn't the Bible say that? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Truth is Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so truth is a person and a principle. And that's what we live by. That's what the performance of our life is on the person, amen, of the will of God and the principles of the will of God, which is his word there in John 17, 17, and also John 14, 6. And so therefore, the serpent represents, or the adder represents the fear of, of what we see and the enemy tries to keep con he tries to get us to see to see outside of what God is saying he tries to get us to see look at this brothers and sisters there as I ask you to turn to first Samuel chapter uh, 17 and it says this in verse 22 and David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren verse 23 says this and as he talked with them Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. Now listen to this. And David heard them. He spake according to the same words, and David heard them. He spake according to the same words, and David, wor and David heard them. What words is it that he spoke? What is it that he said in terms of it mentioning he spoke, amen, concerning or regarding, amen, the same words? And uh, in verse 11, well, in verse 10, if you go back to verse 10 there, in verse 10, praise the name of Jesus, it says this. I won't read everything Goliath said, but in verse 10 in that 17th chapter, it says, And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words, that was the fear of the lion. When he heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid because, because fear comes by the word of the enemy. The negative things that are continually being said and the negative things that are continually being spoken, fear comes by the words of the enemy. When they heard the words of the enemy, they were greatly afraid. So the Bible says that when David showed up in verse 23, amen, the scriptures say, and as he talked with them, behold, there came up uh, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. What same words? The words that he had spoken earlier? And guess what happened? It says, and David heard them. David heard the same thing. David heard the roar of the lion. He heard words that could produce fear. But look what it says in verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, now we're going from, here we go now, we're going from the fear of what you hear to the fear of what you see. The Bible says, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. Now remember, back in verse 11, it says when they heard him, they were afraid, the fear of what you hear. Then now it says here in verse 24, the Bible says that when they saw him, 
it created a fear. And that's what the devil does. He tries to get you to look at things and see them outside of the way that God sees them. And what God, and when I see things outside of the way that God sees things, it creates a fear in me that causes me to be afraid and it affects my daily living and my functioning on a daily basis because it's a fear of what I see. Now notice what it is that after they saw him, brothers and sisters, it says this in verse uh, 25. And in verse 25, it says this. And the men of Israel said, listen to this now. Here it is. Here it is. Because see, after it is that people begin to walk in fear, now the fear that they're walking in, they don't realize it, how it is that they try to get you to enter into the fear that they're already operating in. They try to get you to see what they see, the very thing that's causing them to be discouraged, to become derailed, to become distracted, to become discouraged, to become disappointed. They begin to share with you that which has caused them to enter into fear, and they try to get you to see it the way that they see it. And so listen to what they say to David. And the men of Israel, now the people that's talking, they're in fear. Is that right? Because they saw him and they were so afraid. But the scripture says in verse 25, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Let's look at this, brothers and sisters, as we do. Uh, let's look at the message Bible first and then see if we can see it in the living Bible. Listen to what they say. The talk among the troops was, have you ever seen anything like this? Oh, God. Oh, God. My brothers and my sisters, think about this. Listen, listen, listen. How even now the situation and the season that we're in with the pandemic since situation with the protest with the way amen the leadership is in our nation across the board with such division in that regard and the devil because a house divided against itself shall not stand and so there's division at the top hallelujah regarding amen the leadership of our country there's the division amen of under the covering of our nation division in homes and in churches and is I mean it's just the vision across the board brothers and and sisters and Jesus says and I keep on reminding you that a house divided against itself 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 shall not stand and so therefore it's to get one side is trying to get the other side to see what this side is saying can you see this can you see this and so they said listen look at what's going on look at what's going on in our nation, look at what's happening to our economy. Look at what's going on in our hospitals. Has there ever been a time in your lifetime where you've heard that so many hospitals have been filled to the point that I, I, uh, uh, intensive care units are filled up? where they are in situations where they're bringing people to hospitals and they're deciding if they can let those people come in because they already got so many people that are ill. I'm not telling you just what the news is saying. I'm telling you what we've experienced. He, even here in our own city, in our own county, in our own state, my brothers and sisters, and as it has been shared that large hospitals, large hospitals trying to make the decision which patients are we going to accept what which are we going to turn away because we just don't have the room we don't have the space hallelujah and once again i'm not just going by what the news has said brothers and sisters but talking to individuals and leaders that are in other cities that are actually there and they're experiencing this firsthand it's not just something that the news is reporting but this is 
firsthand. They themselves have gone, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. There are hospitalizations that are taking place even here that I am uh, individually and personally involved with, brothers and sisters, and there happens to be a challenge, amen, trying to get someone in, into this hospital, and they can't accept them there, and trying to get them into another hospital, and they can't accept them there. I've just recently experienced that, finding a hospital where this person could be accepted in terms of a health challenge, a medical challenge in their lives. Glory to God. And in the midst of that, the devil says, listen, you all are doomed. He said, can you see it? Can you see it? When I look at all of this that's occurring and he whispers, have you ever seen anything like this? Have you ever seen in, I'm talking about the fear of the adder, the fear of what you see. When I look at, I've, I've not seen so many businesses shut down. So many businesses and so many individuals that say our company is going to close down Friday. They're, they're laying off 3,000 workers, 3,000 people. Have you ever seen anything like this? I ain't talking about just hear it. You pass by places where there was such vibrancy there, or stores opening, people walking and, and going here and there. Hallelujah. You go a certain time of the day now, it looks like a ghost town. People I know, and certainly we understand the uh, stay-home orders, you know, the shelter restrictions. We understand all of that. We understand all of that. And, 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 and as you pass by, this, bu this business has shut down. This bank has closed. This has closed. And the devil says, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. And the fear of what we see begins to overtake us that's joined in with the fear of what we hear. That's what they asked. That's what the troops asked. Have you ever seen anything like this? This man openly and defiantly challenging Israel, the man who kills the giant will have it made. The king will give him a huge reward, offer his daughter as a bride, and give his entire family a free ride. Have you have you seen anything like this before? Have you seen to get us to see, glory to God, what's outside the will of God, what's outside the way of God? Have you, have you seen this? Have you seen anything like this? It's the fear of the serpent. It's the fear of the adder. And listen, my brothers and my sisters, so here is Elder McMiller. Here it is, brothers and sisters, in the conclusion of this first part of the fear of what you see. I just want to ask you, uh, uh, where do you look when things don't look good? Where do you look? Talk to me, y'all. Talk to me. Where do you look? Ah, glory to God. Where do you look when things don't look good? Because I know based on what we see on television and what we see in social media, amen, the pictures that they show and what's occurring, amen, and we're looking, oh God, help me, Jesus. We're looking at that which can create such fear in our hearts. We're seeing so many situations that can create such fear in my heart. And the question comes to me now, Bishop, where do you look? When things don't look good, where do you look? When things, oh, Jesus, where do you look? Where do you look? Well, let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, glory to God. You want to know where we look, Elder McMillan? You want to know, brothers and sisters, where we look when things don't look good? Listen, I'm looking, hallelujah, even when things aren't looking well. I'm looking. I'm still, somebody say, I'm still looking. I'm still looking, even though things may not look good. I'm looking. Wait, well, tell me. Tell me, because I need to look too. I need to look too, because every day I look, things not looking good. I, I, I hear uh, I, we, they, somebody call and say, Bishop, all right, I checked on so-and-so today. Things not looking good. All right, uh, I'm going through this, and Bishop, things not looking good. Bishop, uh, 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 this happened. Did you hear this happen? And based on what happened, I'm telling you, things are not looking good. Oh, but God says, I got a question for you. Where are you looking when things don't look good? When the fear 
of the adder, the fear of the serpent, the fear of what you see is getting the best of you. Well, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, we'll give you two verses of scripture. We want to close this portion in part, and we'll pick up here the next time. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, amen. You want to know where you look when things are not looking good? Hallelujah. This is what the Bible says. By faith, glory to God. Talking about Moses. By faith, he forsook Egypt. Moses left Egypt. I just want to tell you a little side note. Right now, God is speaking to some of you. There are some things that you need to leave. There are some things. There come a time. Listen, you have been there long enough. You hung in there long enough. You tried to make it work long enough. But by faith, don't leave if you're not leaving by faith now. You're not operating by faith. What do you mean by faith? What is faith? Faith is acting on the word of God. How does faith come? Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. So by faith, he forsook. Why did he forsake Egypt? Why did he leave Egypt? Because he heard God speak to him. Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. And instead of hearing the roar of the lion that creates fear, he heard the voice of God that creates faith. And therefore by faith, talking about Moses now, he forsook Egypt. Not what? Fearing, because faith causes fear. You heard the statement, amen. Fear came and knocked on the door, faith answered, and there was nobody there, amen. Every time fear comes by, knocks on your door, amen. Fear knocks on the door, but let faith answer the door. Let faith in God answer the door. And every time faith answers the door, by the time faith opens the door, fear is gone because fear doesn't fear by the devil doesn't want to deal with faith by the divine God and the Bible says that he forsook Egypt while not fearing the wrath of the king it doesn't matter what it is that the devil that the enemy has said will happen and occur with us when we trust God with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding but in all of our ways I'm telling you can you hear it this evening he you acknowledge him he directs your path. He did not fear. He did not fear, amen, the wrath of the king. He met in his mind when he began to, to see, you know, this could happen and that could happen. In his mind, he began to hear. Though there was the fear, amen, of what you hear and the fear of what you see working with him, faith enabled him to take the next step that he needed to take. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Here it is now, because remember my question, y'all. Y'all remember? Remember my question? Where do you look when things not looking good? Well, it wasn't looking good for Moses in terms of that altercation that he had when he killed the Egyptian, hallelujah, protecting that Hebrew slave. And it wasn't looking good for Moses as possibly the next one in line to become the Pharaoh, to become the king of Egypt. And now he has turned against the structure, amen, that's in place. It wasn't looking good, amen, because of the wrath of the king. But what did he do? You all see it in the verse? You got to have somewhere to look when things are not looking good. Where did he look? The Bible says, for he endured. He endured. How did he make it through the situation, Katrina? How did he make it through? Mary, how did he make it through? Ms. Butler, how did he make it through? New life, my brothers and sisters. How did he make it through, Monica? How did he make it through? How was he able, Sister Dolores Smith? How did he get through? Glory to God. How was it? Sister Weatherspoon, how did he get through? Hallelujah. Sister Marsalis, Sister Smart, amen. How did he get through? Brother Battle, Brother Tim, amen. Bishop Bailey, tell me somebody how, Pastor Johnson, how did he get through? You got to be able to see. You got to be able to see. Instead of allowing what you see to cause fear, you got to know where to look so you can see. Hallelujah. As seeing him who is invisible as seeing him I when things are not looking good I can keep on looking because I'm not looking at what I can see I'm looking at what I can't see that can be seen I'm not looking at what I can see that's the natural things that's happening around me but as I look at them I'm able to see what I can't see with my natural eyes 
but it can be seen in my spirit by the word of God. He saw him who was invisible, who is invisible, God. That's who he saw. You know what? And one of the things this evening that came to me, glory to God, is he says, listen, Roderick, he says, by my spirit, when I have you to speak this, I'm going to release this in terms of where to look when things are not looking good. I look to the invisible. I look to the invisible. I look to God. Even though he cannot physically be seen, he can be seen. He can be seen. You say, where can I see God? I can see him in his word. Hallelujah. I can see him in his word. I look to the word of God because he is the word of God. Doesn't John 1 and 1 say, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God? Where do you look when things are not looking good? I do not allow as I have in the past, even in this season that we're living in. And when it comes to this pandemic, when it comes to the protest, when it comes to politics, where do you look? Because in all those areas, naturally speaking, it doesn't look good. But I have some place to look. You have some place to look when it's not looking good. And like Moses, we look to the invisible. We look to that which cannot be seen with the natural eye, but it can be seen in my spirit. We look to the word of God. We look to what's going to stand forever. We look to which is our light. Amen. There's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That's where we look. That's where we look. That's where we look. My brothers and sisters, he saw him who was invisible. And this is what I release upon you. Yes, Lord, I will. Listen, this is what I release upon you. I declare by the spirit of the living God, as you right now would extend your hands as that of someone being ready to place something in your hands and you are willing to receive, amen, this release of God upon your lives that I am looking to God, the invisible, even when things don't look good. And I receive from God spiritually now, I want to use this term, spiritually I receive God's x-ray vision. I receive this, 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 how, how it was said. I received God's X-ray vision. God's X-ray vision. Now, I'm familiar with the X-ray vision, and some of you all are as well, by the superhero character Superman. That Superman could look at what could be seen. There's a brick wall that's there, and he could see the brick wall. But with the type of sight that he had, he could see what was behind what could be seen. He could see the brick wall, but he was also able to see the invisible. What I'm calling the invisible is that which was behind, that cannot be naturally seen, but it was there. He could see through the wall. I declare by the Spirit of God that in every situation, as you walk, you will not be overcome, overwhelmed, and overpowered, and overtaken by the fear of what you see. It's called the fear of the adder, the fear of the serpent. Amen. Running away from just seeing the serpent and that which he shows us. I declare in the name of Jesus that when you look, when you look, amen, and things don't look good, but you do have that to look to and look toward and look at even when things are not looking good and this is what i believe as it is being spoken over your lives that when you look at the thing that's seen when you look at the thing that's seen and it doesn't look good the spirit of god and the word of god that's in your spirit is going to cause you to see right through that thing and to see god on the other side of it to see the power of God, the plan of God, the pleasure of God, the peace of God, the preeminence of God. You will be able with your spiritual x-ray vision that everything that doesn't look good, there is a peace that's given to you now. I declare in Jesus' name, there is a peace that's given to you now that the thing that you're looking at I looked at the doctor's report. It doesn't look good. I'm looking at my situation in terms of what my body is going through, and the de devil keeps on telling me it doesn't look good. 
But God told me to tell you that you can look to him even when it's not looking good. By faith, Moses could have feared because he looked at the wrath of the king. But instead of looking at what could have happened to him, he looked at who could take care of him instead of looking at what could have happened to him. He looked at who could take care of him. Tonight, brothers and sisters, glory to God, Elder MacMillan. Glory to God, river of life. Thou shalt tread upon the adder. Thou shalt tread. You're going to be continually walking in the midst of things that don't look good. The fear of the adder. The fear, just seeing, just seeing the snake laying there creates such a phobia, creates such a fear in you. He says, but I am going to have you just like you would look at that snake and you would not run. He says, I'm going to have you to look at situations that would once upon a time create such a fear in your heart. He says, you can look to me. Lift your eyes to the hill from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord which hath made the heavens and the earth. And because he can make the heavens and the earth, he could certainly make something out of your situation. God specializes in making the best out of a bad situation. I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you tonight, you do have a place to look and a person to look to when things are not looking good. We will not be overtaken and overwhelmed. David came to the battlefield to prove that. He came because when they saw Goliath, they were afraid. When they heard Goliath, and David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would defy the armies of Israel, that would speak down to the people of God like this? David says, you see this giant that's almost 10 feet tall. You see this humongous, massive man, and he's creating fear. But I see my God. Then I see that he doesn't have a covenant with God because he's uncircumcised. But I see my God because I got a covenant with him. And he comes with a sword and a spear. Oh, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. I'm telling you, thank God for spiritual x-ray vision that I can see the thing that create the fear. But I, when I see the invisible, God enables me to see him and his way, his will. I can look straight through the situation and I can see my God because when things don't look good, he says, I still want you to know that you can look to me. Bless you, Elder MacMillan. Thank you, River of Life. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for once again yielding and being open to the word of God. Father, we thank you now for the study of your word once again. We thank you for the insight of how you continually encouraging us regarding, dear Father, overcoming a life of fear, that we will not be controlled by the fear of what we hear. We will not be controlled by the fear of what we see. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. But for each fear, you've given us faith in you, and we're grateful and thankful. Hallelujah. For the, fear, for the faith that you've given us in the face of fear. We just believe that our hearts are being encouraged even in this season, this time in which we are living as a people, as individuals, as families, as church con congregations. We are thanking you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you, Lord God, are continually speaking unto us as a nation and even as a world. We thank you in the name of Jesus that you, Lord God, are operating mightily in our lives by causing an offset to whatever it is that the enemy is trying to bring on us. We thank you for the victory in Jesus Christ that we, dear Father, can look to you when things are not looking good. Take our eyes off the ser serpent and take our, put our eyes on the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for that person that's not saved tonight that person that's not born again, that person that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're grateful and thankful for those individuals, hallelujah, that 
are even right now desiring to be saved. Those persons that believe that you, Father God, sent your son Jesus Christ because you love us and you sent him in terms of his death, his dying on the cross for our sins, his burial after that of having died for three days and nights in the grave and then resurrected from the grave was he. Hallelujah. Not raised up but resurrected meaning that when he came forth father he would we know that you've shown us he would not die again he being the first fruits of the resurrection and we thank you for his resurrected life and we thank you for his ongoing life of intercession at your right hand he ever liveth making intercession for us praying for us on a daily basis and those persons father that are willing and ready to receive jesus christ in their hearts tonight i thank you that salvation has come to them even now as they would even pray even now in the name of Jesus father we thank you that as they in their hearts say Lord Jesus come into my heart be my Savior I receive you as my Lord I believe that you did die you were buried and raised from the dead for me you live now to speak to the Father on my behalf I receive you tonight as my Savior thank you for saving me Thank you for saving me. I can now look to you when things are not looking good. Thank you for saving me. In your name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for praying that prayer with us tonight. You did so. Salvation has come to your heart. Eternal life is given unto you. Now you want to become developed in eternal life, the life of Christ. Let us help you. That phone number that's there, the name of our church, call that number. Amen. We are still not meeting within our same sanctuary, but we want to reach out to you until such time that we do and help you to become developed in the word, the will, and the way of God. We just believe that it is certainly available to you, and we want to make it available to you so that you can grow in the things of God. God bless you. Amen. And let us help you. Let me uh, remind you, as we said we would on a daily basis, amen, our upcoming uh, time of fellowship and worshiping the Lord together as a fellowship of churches, the Miletus Covenant Connection, the fellowship of churches around the United States that God has graced my life, my wife as well, to be have oversight of. And therefore, we have our annual meeting. We're going to do it virtually this year. As we're doing right now, it'll begin next Sunday morning, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Services Sunday morning at 10, Sunday evening at 7, Monday at 12 noon, Tuesday 12 noon, Wednesday 12 noon, as well as Monday night at 7, Tuesday night at 7. We look forward to you tuning in, worshiping with us during that time of celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. We just have also as well set up for our youth that's going to be ministered to on Zoom. All of that information should be on the screen there. Amen. Where you can see it, the registration form for our youth. Amen. Uh, if you're not a member of one of the churches in our fellowship, uh, we certainly want to uh, send out to you uh, this uh, a registration form. Uh, and uh, we, we certainly want, if you would call our church and just give us your name, whatever, and say, listen, I want to register for the conference. We'll email you. We'll send you the registration. You fill it out there. Uh, it's so structured where you can fill it out online and email it right back to us. And so, therefore, uh, we know that you're there. I'm believing God for four, no less than 500 youth that's going to attend uh, the conference. We even want to say there are some 12-year-olds that are able to receive the word of God. Amen. Uh, you being uh, uh, spiritually uh, disciplined where you can come online. Amen. Uh, with your parents allowing you to do so. And certainly we want to invite you to come. We're not set up for our, our children's church this year as it relates to communicating with them online. But amen. Those that are, are 12 up to 19, 20 years old, we want to give you the opportunity uh, to receive the word of God. You will start on Monday. Monday morning, amen, on Zoom. All of the information is there where you connect to Zoom, the ID number, as well as the password. All of that's been made available to you. And we're so excited about this, our very first, our very first virtual communication of the word of God uh, during our conference. This is the first of the Miletus Covenant Connection. And we're just excited about what God has already planned that is good and not evil. And he gives us a hope in a future regarding, amen, 
this conference that will begin on Sunday morning. But until then, we'll look forward to sharing with you tomorrow at noontime. Uh, glory to God as the Lord would delay his coming and say the same. Hallelujah. But until that time, my brothers and sisters, we're lifting up those that continually have been uh, challenged in their bodies with COVID-19 or uh, other illnesses that have that taken place that have uh, had them to be hospitalized. I say to the New Life Church, I sent you out a list of names that, that have recently come to me, all right, in terms of challenges health-wise in uh, members of our church in that regard, and so that you might pray with them and for them. Those are names that's been recently given to me. And so we're still praying for others that we had already been, been given to. Uh, we've been, those names have been given to us. But God bless you, and we are keeping all those individuals lifted in prayer. But until such time that the Lord would allow us to reassemble, that we can continue to be conformed to the image of his son, we say to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Be blessed. Go in peace and be encouraged.